morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. Sorry I didn't talk in my video last week. I had a bit of a cold, but today we're all better, so I'm going to show you how to take a teapot, and I found this in Goodwill. Where else? There's the price sticker right on it. <laughs> and I turned it around so that it looked like something I would love and adore in the house and would actually be able to use and it's a shabby beach theme. The, the lid looks more like the beach theme part of it, um, but I still love the butterflies and the hydrangeas, which are still things you see at the beach, and it's got a blue-green theme to it, and I will show you how we can get this started. So before we get started, I just want to say I use chalk paint on almost all of my projects and one of the main reasons is because you do not have to use a primer. So over this surface metal, you normally need a primer and then your paint. I will be using the Annie Sloan chalk paint today. This color is called Lotus Blue and this one is called Duck Egg. And I originally started this with a sponge brush. I ended up, and I'll show you what I did. I blended the two colors. So I started with this lighter blue color at the base, and then, here it is in real time, I added the softer green color, just kind of blending it right there in the center and painted the rest of it. Now I ended up pouncing with this brush anyway, so I decided to use a pouncer on the other side and it gave a bit of a smoother coverage and it was a better blend. So on the other side, I just used the same two paints and the blue on the bottom and brought it up around the top and then pounced the green around the top of it. And I made sure to cover the handle and the top of this. Now while that was drying, I decided to cut out my napkins and I'm using two different napkins. You want to make sure that you do not separate your napkins before you cut them. It will make it really hard to cut. And these small curved scissors, which I have on my website, are perfect for cutting these napkins. They're sharp, they're small, they're curved, they get into these smaller spaces. And I'm just going to cut out what I think I need for the front and back of this project. So now I'm going to decoupage and I'm doing a dry technique using napkin decoupage glue. This will be on my website, this decoupage glue. It is different than the Mod Podge. It means, the dry technique means you place your napkin down on a dry surface apply decoupage glue to your brush and brush it over the napkin. It, the decoupage glue that's made for napkins is more of a gelatinous substance, so it sinks into the napkins a lot easier and faster. And I'm going to let this centerpiece dry. You don't have to do that, but I'm worried sometimes when I'm working that I'm going to touch the piece that's still wet and pull it away. You may not have to do that if you're working on a larger piece, but you can see how close these pieces are. So again, here's what I'm doing. I separated the napkin and the tea kettle is completely dry. So I'm putting the dry napkin over the dry surface and I am taking a bristle brush, not a sponge brush. A sponge brush might have too much drag to it. And I'm holding the napkin down until one section of it is firmly glued. And if you work from the center out, it's much easier to do this and it prevents a lot of wrinkles from happening. And when I'm all done here, I'm going to put this in an oven and you do not have to put this in an oven to dry. This particular teapot, I believe it has Bakelite on the handle here. Now, I always keep the oven down below 170 degrees. And what I do is I put this in the oven cold, then I set it to 170 degrees, then I turn the oven off when it reaches 170. And I just leave this in there for about 10 minutes. It dries so quickly. It helps to smooth out even more wrinkles if you've got any. And I'm just going to work on the spout here. And now 
I've taken this out of the oven. It's all dry, it's cooled down. And I'm going to add one coat of decoupage glue over the whole surface and again, put it aside to dry. I am using a semi-gloss decoupage glue, a napkin decoupage glue here, and I'm going to cover the whole surface and put it aside to dry. It doesn't matter at this point if you're using matte, semi-gloss, or high gloss, because if you'd like, you can change the whole look of that surface when you apply your top coat. Now what I'm doing is everything is dry and I am taking these pearlescent chalks and, and you can see that I'm using an eyeshadow applicator and I'm just going to go around the edges with a similar color and I'm going to put this little shadow in. And I'm going to do this around all of my different pieces that I've decoupaged and I'm using blue in some areas and green in others, sticking with the blue-green theme. Now, you can and should secure this powder before moving on to the next step. And there's a product, uh, it's called a spray fixative. Some people have used hairspray. I'm not wild about the hairspray because it because it's not made for this and over the long haul it could get flaky or come off or dull or yellow because hairspray is not meant to last. So uh, you can use a fixative or I am using a spray top coat over this so I will be okay to skip the fixative part. If you're going to paint on your top coat you have to use the fixative. Now this next part is very messy, so what I did was I just put a paper shopping bag down and I have this flexible toothbrush that's designated just for crafts and I poured a little bit of chalk paint into a container and I watered it down just a little bit and you want to practice a little bit on your surface to see, you see that kind of a splatter that it gives there? For me, that's perfect. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to do the same splatter effect over my teapot. And this will air dry really quickly. And I'm going to let this side dry before I move on to the other side. And one other thing that I did with that same chalk paint mixture, I used my index finger to rub some of the paint on and then my ring finger to blend it in just in certain areas around the pot. And I really want this blended. So I put a smear on and then I blended it really well so that it was just barely like a white shadow. Now I'm going to work on the lid. This is plain old Elmer's glue and I took my brush, now this lid has already been painted, and I coated it with a thick coat of glue. Make sure you wash that brush right away or you will ruin the brush. And then I took some sand and I poured it into a little plate. I added some coarse glitter, mixed it up, and then I poured it all over that glue and put this aside to dry. I let this air dry to be on the safe side. Some glitters are plastic, some are metal, they can melt, so I just let this air dry. Now I'm going to go back to the base and I'm using this Krylon Crystal Clear Gloss. Now make sure your spray says non-yellowing and that it's clear. It's really important that it's non-yellowing. And I'm going to spray one coat on lightly dry and then spray on a second coat. And I'm doing this outside because it's a beautiful spring day. And I'm going to go back to the lid which has now dried. And you see there's that little lip up at the front there that tells you where to put this lid in the tea kettle so that it doesn't fall off. And based on that, I am going to place my design using these shells and pearls at the back part here. And I'm just using some hot glue to glue all of these pieces down. I'm also going to have a tweezer handy because the little glass pearls can be a bit slippery. 
I've also got some mother of pearl mica that I'm going to put around that little top right there. By the way, this top did not come off uh, otherwise I probably would have replaced it with something a little bit prettier. So I'm just going to cover it in the mother of pearl mica. Keep removing these glue strands. <laughs> and I also placed some of the mica, maybe two or three pieces just around the lid there. So here's how the lid looks. Here's how the rest of our project looks. I am thinking I'm going to use this to keep some of my tea bags in. I drink a lot of herbal tea, so I'm going to use this. But there's good news. If you can only find a cute little tea kettle, but it doesn't have a lid to it, you can still use that. I've seen people use these as vases, so they put fresh flowers in them, dried flowers in them. I've also seen some people put a pin cushion up in the top there. This would make an adorable pin cushion base. You can keep utensils in it also if you don't have a top or a lid for it, or you can use it as a little bank. It's still really adorable for that. Just throw your spare change into it. Now I do want to mention that I have a website. The link is directly below this video. My website does go through Amazon. However, it helps me out tremendously when you go through my link to make your purchases and you can buy some or all of the products. You don't have to just stick with what I have on my page. If you need anything else while you're over at Amazon, you can still shop for whatever else you want. If you have Amazon Prime, all of the same features apply. If you don't have Prime, I attempt to get you free shipping whenever I can. I believe the minimum has now gone up as of uh, March or April of 2016. I think you need to spend $50 before you get the free shipping, which I tend to do every time I go to Amazon. Uh, but I did want to mention that up front. Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. And also, thank you so much for subscribing. Those subscriptions keep us going over here when we make videos for YouTube. So just click on the little scissor icon on the bottom right side of this page and you'll be subscribed to my channel. I love hearing from you guys. You are just some of the nicest people ever. Thank you so much for that, guys. And in the meantime, have a beautiful beginning of your springtime, and I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.